Hey guys, I just want to let you know, we charge a standard fee here for all the reviews we do. It helps us keep the site going, but I want to be honest with you, these aren't meant to be endorsements. Let's get into it. Hey guys, we're near the Fullerton Loop in Fullerton, California, SoCal. Really nice overcast day, it's not too hot, we're just going for a ride. And I'm here with Sam from the Electric Bicycle Center and Brian from High Bike, man. It's really a privilege to get to hang out with you and get all the insights on these bikes. Yeah, thanks for having me out, I appreciate it. Absolutely, we're checking out the All Mountain. This is Xduro 2.0. It's sort of the starting point for the Xduro line and for the All Mountain line. So in terms of price, $46.99 exactly. on this. And you know, High Bike, I really, I've always appreciated the aesthetic. You can see the, the tubing, it's all hydro formed and kind of got this angular look to it. Really nice full suspension designs here. And this one is running with a Yamaha PWX mid-drive motor, whereas those two are Bosch over there. And they're probably Bosch CX, right? They are Bosch CX. Yeah, Bosch CX. So I'm gonna do a little bit of compare and contrast on this. You'll notice that the battery pack is external. And that's how it is on most of the Yamaha bikes that I've looked at, especially in the high bike line, whereas Bosch is going a little bit more towards the integrated power tube. It is heavier, okay? So this one, being like 6.7 pounds versus I think 6.3 just for the metal battery, but you've also got a cover and you've got a little bit more frame material in my experience. So 51.2 pounds for this entire bike right here. We are on the medium, it comes in five frame sizes. So fit is really taken care of uh, with high bike. I, I really appreciate that. One colorway, you've got the gloss black, gloss red, you know, internally routed cables with these nice big grommets. So they're easier to service. I love that they've got the anodized black stanchions on both the front and rear shocks. And even on this dropper post, about 100 millimeters of travel here, uh, 160 up front, 150 in the rear for the actual suspension. So a little bit more up front, maybe that helps you to absorb those bigger hits and also just the geometry of the frame. Brian was giving me some feedback earlier. Of course, it has a tapered uh, steer tube up there. And being an air fork, we're a little bit lighter weight. We've got compression adjust right here. We've got rebound rapid recovery down there and you can adjust the the sag right you can adjust the air pressure on these so that's really nice same thing goes for the rear compression and rebound adjust i just like how all of this looks and the little attention to detail look at this this little plastic almost like a like a mud flap or something that's going to block that stanchion so if you've got muck coming up from your rear tire it's going to stay clean for that travel and maybe maintain that smooth activation it's you're not going to get as much stiction so I, I appreciate that we've also got some thicker stanchions here pretty heavy duty through axles front and rear of course 15 millimeter up front 12 millimeter in the rear boost hub spacing so 110 versus 100 and that gives you a sturdier spoke bracing angle nice 14 gauge spokes 32 hole on both of these rims they are alex rims a little bit wider they're just going to support that larger tire so these are plus size tires 27.5 by 2.8 they give you a little bit more float a little bit more traction there is some weight associated with that but when you're on an e-bike maybe not such a big deal and this motor is very capable up to 80 newton meters of torque and up to 120 rpm support that's something that bosch was a leader in before but now with the pwx system uh, you know you get the same kind of thing especially in the the highest level of assist so you know it does matter what gear you're in in terms of achieving a, a top speed it does matter what assist level you're in for getting that higher rpm support and i'll go into that a little bit more when we get into that new switch display console i really like this thing it's actually it's compact it stays out of the way but it still gives you a lot of good feedback and they manage to uh, squeeze in a micro usb port that's something that bosch wasn't able to do with their purion which is kind of a competitive maybe a little bit smaller but it reminds me a lot of that that sort of display style. So it's minimalist, it blends in. And even though the battery pack does stand out on the frame, uh, there's those benefits of it sliding out to the side, being a little bit lighter weight and being interchangeable with other Yamaha bikes. Whereas sometimes the power tube, it could go down, it could go out to the side, it can be heavier, the plates are all different. So, you know, there are, there are definitely some trade-offs worth considering. And one of the big ones is that we've got standard size chain rings. Okay, so 44, 32, 44 teeth on the largest one. 32 teeth on the smaller one and that multiplies by 10 speed cassette in the rear 11 to 32 there's plenty of range there for hitting and maintaining higher speeds 20 miles per hour is the top speed on this by the way it's class one or climbing a little bit more effectively but without having a huge dish and so 
you know, the steps between these sprockets are a little bit finer. Shifting should be a little bit easier to do, which is nice because this drive system does not have shift detection the way that Bosch does. Um, that motor, it's listening for all the same signals, rear wheel speed, you can see the magnet right there on the sensor pedal cadence, pedal torque. This one listens to all of those, but it's a little bit more torque reliant in my experience, and it doesn't have that like shift detection. Bosch, it's, it's a software thing, so it's not perfect, but it is a nice little upgrade. So coming back to those finer increments, the finer steps between those 10 sprockets, it helps to make shifting a little bit smoother. We have this nice rubberized slap guard chainstay protector right here. We've got Shimano Dior derailleur with Shadow Plus. So in the off position, it's a little easier to shift and to do rear wheel maintenance if you're taking the wheel off. In the up position, it's tight. You're not gonna get as much slap with that chain, especially if you're descending and you're on bumpy terrain. Maybe you aren't even pedaling, you're just stabilizing yourself. I like these pedals, aluminum alloy platform. They're kind of unbranded, 170 or 175 millimeter crank arm, depending on the frame size that you go with. Really nice brake setup on this bike, by the way. Two finger, these are Shimano hydraulic disc brakes, adjustable reach on those. 100, actually 203 millimeters on that front rotor, 180 on the rear, and these are quad piston calipers. So you can see down there, a little bit more surface area, good heat dissipation and good grab. It's just a nice setup all around. So between the plus size tires, boost hub spacing, the really sturdy, durable suspension, both rock shocks, pretty proven components. I mean, you know, there are Fox, there's some, there's some different brands out there to compare and contrast, but for, for like the entry point, I feel like this has a lot of good high quality componentry and that dropper seat post just makes it really easy to approach. It's something that, you know, I'd expect to see on like a nice all mountain bike uh, like this. And then the trigger shifters right and left, many of the e-bikes, especially from Bosch, they don't have the, the two by you, you just, I guess you can't do that with the current generation of Bosch motors. So that's a real standout. It's a real highlight for me. And a lot of times I ask myself, like, is that really necessary with an e-bike motor? You know, is 10 speeds, 11, even 12 speed, like the SRAM Eagle, that's a lot of gears to choose from. And then you only have one derailleur in terms of weight and adjustment and cable stretch and stuff. I don't love having a second derailleur, but this is a nice way to give you all those extra gears and have those finer steps. And I think it actually works pretty well. Been shifting through and it's, it's doing just fine. Um, yeah, I guess just wanted to come up here and show you the dropper post lever and that short stem. This is kind of like pulled back a little bit. It's gonna be good for all types of conditions, riding around uh, mountain, all mountain experience. For a little bit more information on that, I'm gonna come over to Brian. You know, fill, fill me in, you guys have a whole range of bikes. Like, who's this one for and, and what does it really mean, the all mountain? I think uh, what you have here is uh, you know, the all mountain platform is is that it's it's an all around rider, but somebody who is going to charge the trails that they're out on, uh, somebody who's looking for you know a very capable platform that uh, you know if they get into the rougher stuff is going to take care of them just fine. If they get into the steep stuff, uh, you know the way the geometry is set up, they can feel comfortable with again kind of really you know getting rowdy and, and charging ahead on that. I think we've done a really good job, you know, with producing a bike that's that's at home under those conditions. And when things mellow out a little bit, you know, this will take care of you just as well uh, under those uh, conditions. And then if you want to bump it up, you know, you have a platform in our Enduro line that gives you even longer travel. That's uh, this guy and that little bit slacker head tube angle. Exactly. And that's going to help you take bigger hits downhill, but the, the steering's not as quick. Right. The wheelbase is longer on this one. It is. Enduro. How does this compare to the full seven over there, you know, again, coming from all mountain full seven. So the all mountain full seven LT are, are great. It's an interesting comparison to make because the full seven LT, you know, when you start looking at the spec details, yeah, it looks pretty similar. It's got 150 mil yeah. travel front and rear. Of course, with the all mountain, now we're doing 160 in the front. So you have a very, very capable platform here. It's plus size tire again. So the similarities are there, but then you start looking at the finer points the geometry on this bike, it's a little bit shorter in the wheelbase. It's a little bit taller in the head tube mm. and, and just a little bit steeper in the head tube angle. So, you know, if we're talking about uh, in the all mountain, a, a bike that's that's great for terrain, that's perhaps, you know, more aggressive, a little more, you know, alpine in nature, uh, where you have long extended descents, mm. uh, you know, the full seven LT with those little tweaks is is a great bike for terrain that's probably you know mellower to rolling where you know having trail or having a bike that's a bit quicker handling sort of 
going in and out of twisty switchbacks. Um, you know, with that steeper head tube angle, you know, it's going to be a little more playful and a little better, uh, you know, suited for those conditions. So hmm. it's it's kind of a uh, a really nice complement to the all mountain, uh, but you know, filling a different niche. So, so it's uh, like capable and then like a little bit more hardcore. For sure. Okay, right. cool. And then like really then hardcore. This takes hardcore to the next, uh, you know, level <laughs> with. Uh, uh, you know, the 180 travel. And, and you can see that it's like the handlebars always want to turn because it's kind of got that, that slack uh, head tube angle. Uh, you do still have like a downhill model, right? We do. We still have two downhill models in the lineup. Uh, those those take <laughs> sort of that inter inter incremental, uh, um, you know, steps a, a notch further in that the downhill bike will have a 200 millimeter travel platform and it's a slightly longer wheelbase mm. still and a slightly slacker front end. So a very particular purpose built machine for those who want to shuttle themselves up and then again you know hit those descents um you know at an all-out pace and then cycle through again you know, yeah. shuttle themselves back up to the top That's and let's, sweet. let's hit it again it's it's really a fun bike uh and uh you know for those who've embraced it you know it's it's been uh you know the perfect fit so. but that ride style like i'm i'm more of like the all mountain and maybe even like the full seven or whatever just because i'm riding on stuff like this i, I have like one bike right and so that's kind of the bike that does it all personally but it's still very capable like you said it can handle the downhill especially with those those larger tires the plus size it gives you that stability and um, forgiveness is like a word that comes to mind it does. when it you're does. riding down a, a trail, you know, and these Maxxis tires, you were saying that they're, they're a nice upgrade. Um, you know, in the past you've had a lot of Schwabi and that's great, but the, the rubber has been a little bit softer. These, these are holding up better for you. Yeah. The, you know, considering where we are today, you know, Southern California and the Southwest, the terrain's a little bit, uh, rougher on, on rubber. So the Maxxis tire, you know, it's a very durable uh, tire and uh, you yeah. know, it's been well received as, as at the spec level. Or for streets. So for me, again, one bike that you I ride my bike, my full suspension bike on concrete a lot, like to the trails oh, okay. and just around town. So having a little bit, I don't know, more durable rubber or something comes to mind. This also has like a puncture protection uh, system going on here. I think it's the EXO protection. So that's nice, you know, when you're going across, maybe there are thorns or something, it's not going to get punctured quite as easily coming back to the motor because for me that's the big you, you know there there is a difference between uh bosch and yamaha and in this case the weight on this thing it's like 6.8 pounds versus 8.8 pounds on bosch it doesn't have the shift detection the q factor is really narrow it's like 170 millimeters so you know the the drivetrain maybe it, it offers a little bit more room for the double chain ring that we see there um it's quiet it's efficient it's it's nice they've got this plastic skid plate here and the gravity casting interface it tipped up the motor and it interfaces with this nice hydroform tubing you can see the gussets here this is hardcore stuff like high bikes definitely a leader in the space if you haven't heard them uh, before because you're in North America it's a German company they've been around for a while and they're really a leader in the electric mountain bike space um, they're one of Sam's favorite favorite brands because he sells a bunch and he says he really hasn't had any troubles with them before we get into that like testimonial thing i want to call it a couple other specs though we've got this high bike branded extra saddle it's actually Selly royale pretty nice stuff these flat rubber locking grips they're doing a pretty good job they're not twisting on me and then the charger for the battery is down here and this thing is it's kind of big 2.1 pounds see how it's a little bit longer than some of the other ones and you can't unplug the cables from either side so in your backpack it just takes up more physical space and then the the plug port is plastic and when you plug it into the side of the battery you have to do it on the left hand side which is which is where you lay your bike down in in many cases you don't want to lay your bike down on the drive side because the derailleurs and stuff can get bumped so you're, you're laying it down on this side you still want to be careful because those big disc brake rotors they can get bent if you're not careful you want to be delicate with your bike um, but see, see the charging port so your bike's on its side or lean precariously against the wall that plastic plug is connected right there and it sort of like locks in so if you trip over it it's not just going to like bump out it might knock the bike over it might even crack and so for me that's that's a bit of a like ah be careful and then the crank arm gets pretty close to it if that cycles around accidentally it could snag it i you know i just don't want to break the most expensive part of the bike these are like 900 dollars to replace i would probably be taking that off frequently and it's a good idea to store your lithium ion battery packs in a cool dry location try not to let them go all the way to zero 20 to 80 percent is really where they like to stay if you're going to try to go for the long lasting um, you know, and high bike has a pretty good warranty uh, combined with Yamaha. 
here we go. I've got the key in here. I'm gonna unlock this and then slide the battery out to the side. This is what it looks like. 36 volt, 13.6 amp hours, very close to 500 watt hours. It does have a little LED charge level indicator built right in. Nice little handle up top. So this is the kind of thing that you could take in, charge it, and then leave it inside so it doesn't get super hot or super cold. And that's gonna help it last longer. So Sam's coming over here. Maybe, maybe you can help me get this back in, Sam, by taking the key out. Yeah. He was showing me that if you take the key out and then you set this down, see those blades right there? You gotta be kind of thoughtful about how you position it and then tip it and then listen. Clicks in, that's how you know you're ready to go. It's not gonna fall out. Really appreciate that. You know, so coming back to, it's pretty easy to remove that battery. Yeah, it stands out a little bit visually compared to a power tube, but there's a there's a lot that you, you gain from this. You know, it, it is lightweight. It is easier to get off the bike. And you know, you got the quick release wheels and stuff. You could break this bike down. You could reduce the weight and hang it off the back of your car, depending on what type of rack you have. I feel like this is a, is a great option. It's really fun to ride. And the motor has been impressing me quite a bit today. What, what are your thoughts on this bike or the drive system and stuff, Sam? Well, you know, high bike's been around since the 1920s. And- Really? Yeah. Wow. When we were doing Prohibition, they were doing on bicycles. <laughs> they were like, let's just go for a bike ride. Yeah. So, Meet me at my secret spot, way on the so trail. So when they entered into the e-bike market, they became the world leader in electric mountain bikes. Uh -huh. And they've won all the accolades and all the awards. They've set the standard, quite honestly. And I'm, I'm a lucky guy that is able to actually sell them uh, here in Southern California, because there's a big, you know, a lot of people don't know the high bike name, perhaps, you know, they know Giant right. or Specialized or Trek. Yep. And they go and check those bikes out and they come in and they check out the high bike and they're like, hey, we're digging this and we're selling a lot of them. Yes, yes, it's a very nice bike. And, you know, coming back to the benefits, the trade-offs, I hope I've done a good job presenting those fairly. You know, we're gonna hop on this and ride it around a little bit and you'll get some up-close shots. Um, but for me, I was going back to back with Bosch because those are really the two drive systems that uh, high bike goes for in their mountain bike series. That's correct, yes. And some exciting news for next year as well. To activate the bike, you just come over here and press this power button, boots up pretty quickly. And depending on the lighting, it can be a little bit difficult to see. Uh, it is backlit, uh, there is a light button, but that's really only relevant if you have headlight, a tail light. This bike does not. So there's just this like faint blue glow. I could see it pretty well back at the shop with the overcast here. It's, uh, it's a little bit easier just to see it with the light shining down. So we do have walk mode. Uh, I believe that would only work if you were in one of the assist levels, but apparently that's been disabled for North America. So I wasn't able to test it. It really does nothing right now. Um, up and down, those are your big buttons. So we go from off to plus eco, eco, standard, high, and EXPW. EXPW is the mode where you really get the highest torque and power and that speed. Um, it's pretty easy to reach this display. I love that it has the the charging port and that it's just, you know, again, so compact and clean. See where it says odometer right down there? Now, there are other readouts, and I, it took a little bit of experimentation, but you get to those by holding the down button. So we go from odometer to trip and then range. And range is really cool because it's dynamic. So depending on the level of assist you're in and the battery charge level, and, and I'd assume, you know, how you've been riding, it actually dynamically calculates. It says 42 miles in the highest level of assist all the way down in Eco Plus, 116. So this is a very capable bike. Uh, back to like the efficiency of the Yamaha drive system. It's, it's a leader in that category. And now if we go and we hold down again and we go back to odometer, you can actually hold up and down. It has to be done in odometer, but this lets you change units from kilometers to miles per hour, and then just hold down again to exit. And I love that they've got a 10 bar battery infographic. It's better than the five bar, you know, that's like 20% steps, whereas this is 10%. When you combine the 10% steps with range estimation, this display kind of has everything that I, I would ask for, you know, without being too complex and kind of overloading some of those, those menus and stuff. So I swapped bikes with Sam so you guys could see this third person. Go for it, buddy. Oh. <laughs> nice to have the extra wide tires and this soft, sandy stuff. Pebbles getting kicked all over the place. Very comfortable suspension. The 
different frame sizes really pay off. You know, being able to get that, that full leg of extension and feel the comfort. Sam's gonna come back here and give us a little brake test. Yes, oh, beautifully done, man. And you know, me and Mike from Nextdoor at Forge and Bikes, we actually came out here and met with the subcommittee of seven people and they voted five to two in favor of e-bike access to the Fullerton Loop. So that's, is that a thing now? Yeah, you can ride your e-bikes on the Fullerton Loop. Fantastic, yeah. thank you, buddy. You got it. I appreciate that. I, I have knee injuries, so that's how I got into e-bikes. I love mountain biking, but sometimes the climbing is difficult. So back to, you know, 75 Newton meters of torque, that's the Bosch system, 80 Newton meters of torque on Yamaha. They feel pretty good. I mean, have you ever struggled with either? Are they pretty comparable to you, Sam, or what? I Well, uh, I have limitations on what I'm able to do. I'm not a, you know, pro mountain biker by any means. <laughs> so you're not pushing the we've system. We've gone up in the Santa Monica Mountains, and I can get to the point where I'm losing traction with the rear wheel. So if I can climb to that point, at that point, I'm usually ready to get off and uh, carry the bike up to the next section. And you're, you know, a bigger fellow, right? Yep. That's uh, That's impressive. Hey guys, from here you can see the two aluminum alloy chain rings and that derailleur acts as like a kind of a guide. You're not going to drop the chain as easily. And the marker here is telling us it's 32 tooth on the smaller sprocket and 44 tooth on the larger one. I think earlier when I was doing the walk around, I misquoted on the cassette. So it's actually 1136. So there's a pretty good range there. And it's just nice to be able to switch through those gears. I'm going to do that. I'm going to pedal along. I'll be in the highest level of assist. And uh, yeah, you can just see what that looks like. Feeling pretty responsive. You know, Brian was saying the way that the battery is designed coming out to the side, it allows them to get that lower standover height with that top tube and the nice angles. Um, it's a good system and I'm, I was pushing it here, trying to hit that high RPM, the 120. So I'm up in EXPW and that's the highest level of assist. I'm gonna do that again. You definitely have to switch gears, get in those higher gears to hit the higher speed, 20 miles per hour class one, but you know, it's, it's definitely powerful even in that highest level. I meant even in that highest gear. <laughs> Nice and smooth. And those are 36 millimeter stanchions up there. Actually 35, I, I misquoted. I'm used to the odd odd numbers not being a thing, but it's usually like 30, 32, 34, and these are 35, so extra thick. I think that's about it, you guys. Like I said before, my goal is to give you all the specs and some insight and then you know pick Brian's brain. It's a real pleasure having you out here, Brian. Thank you for coming with the bikes and stuff. For the full written review, I'll see you guys back at electricbikereview.com. Ride safe, have fun, love you guys. That is the all Mountain 2.0 Extra Row. Sweet. <laughs>